Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're doing something different. Today we're working on a Chinese scooter with a GY6 engine. Now this scooter is a crank no start. I already took a look at it and it has got no spark. So let's see if we can diagnose this one together. Now, as always, let's start out by confirming the customer complaint. I've got the keys right here. Let's turn it on. Let's try to crank it. Let's try again. But as you can hear, crank, but no start. And that's customer complaint confirmed. Now, a little bit of background information on this scooter. About four months ago, I installed a new carburetor, a new CDI box, and a new ignition coil. Now, about four days ago, this scooter stranded again. I took a quick look and it was a no spark. Now, a lot of times when you get no spark on a scooter, it is CDI box related. Not always, but a lot of times. So I quickly contacted the supplier, scooterdiscounter.nl, and it's not a sponsor, but they are great guys to deal with. And I asked them, what are the chances of the CDI box failing again within four months? And I said, well, the chances are close to none. But anyway, we will send you one for warranty just in case. Now, I agree with them. If during this diagnosis, it turns out that the problems are not CDI box related, they can send me an invoice anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to confirm we've got no spark. Now, for better access, I removed the, uh, the seat, which is quite easy, and I removed the spark plug. Now, in the next step, I'm going to crank the engine over while you guys watch for spark. Now, when you're checking for spark, make sure the spark plug has got a good ground. So make sure you have a good connection with the engine block. Now, let's crank it over. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I don't see any spark whatsoever. Now, before we continue diagnosing this ignition system on this scooter, let's first learn a little bit more about it. Now, I've got some spare parts laying around, and these parts are basically what makes up the ignition system of this scooter. We've got an ignition coil with a spark plug lead and a spark plug. We've got a CDI box. We've got a stator with a pickup coil, and we have got a flywheel. Now let's start out with the stator. The stator is the part that provides your scooter with electricity. Now it's called a stator because it's mounted stationary and it doesn't rotate. The other part that comes with it, the flywheel, is also called a rotor because this is the part that rotates around the stator. Now inside the uh, rotor there are magnets which you can't see with the naked eye, but with this card we can make those magnets visible. You see those black spots? Those are the magnets. Now, when a magnet rotates around a coil, it induces electricity. Electricity that can be used to charge your battery, make sure your lights works, but it also powers up our CDI box. Now, this is how the stator normally sits inside the rotor. Now, this little part over here is called a pickup coil. The pickup coil is mounted very close to the flywheel. And every time this little notch, called the reluctor, passes by the pickup coil, that pickup coil sends a signal to the CDI box that it's time to spark. Now you can see there's only one notch on this flywheel because we only have got one cylinder. There's also a keyway on that flywheel making sure that it only fits in one way and that spark occurs in exactly the right time. Now this is the ignition coil and that's the part when energized produces the spark. This is the spark plug cable and that makes sure the spark makes it all the way from the ignition coil to the spark plug. Now the spark plug is the part that delivers the spark into the combustion chamber. Now the last part is the CDI box. The CDI box gets its power from the stator. Now every time this little notch passes by the pickup coil, that pickup coil sends a signal to the CDI box, it's time to spark. The CDI box then energizes the ignition coil and a spark should occur. I say should because in our scooter, it certainly does not. Now that we know how the system works, we can start diagnosing our no spark. Now all the signals come together at the CDI box, so there's where we're gonna start our measurements. Now I'm gonna take the measurements both with professional and with DIY tools. 
Now let's start out by taking a look at this diagram. We can see we have got a six pin CDI box. Now one of the pins with the black and white wire is called a kill switch. Now when that pin is grounded, the CDI stops sparking when you turn off the ignition, for example. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that pin is not grounded. Now this test can very easily be performed using a simple test light. I connected one side of my test light to the scooter's battery positive. Now when I touch a negative, the test light is going to light up. Now gently remove the two pin connector holding the black and white wire and gently probe that wire. And as you can see, that pin is grounded. So right now that CDI can spark. Now this is normal because the ignition is turned off. Now let's turn the ignition on and let's crank the engine over. And you can see during cranking that pin is not grounded. So that's not causing our no spark. In the next step, I want to take a look at the signal coming from the pickup coil. Is that pickup coil sending a nice and clear signal to the CDI telling it when to spark? At first, we're going to hook up an oscilloscope so we can take a look at the waveform and what the signal actually looks like. After that, I'm going to hook up a multimeter to see what that looks like. So this is our setup. I set up the oscilloscope and hooked one side of my lead, my negative lead, up to the negative post on the battery. And I hooked up my positive lead to the trigger wire going to that CDI. Now let's crank it over and let's see what that trigger pulse looks like. Now let's crank over the engine and take a look at that waveform. Now that looked like a fantastic trigger pulse to me. Now let's repeat the same test using a multimeter. Now do keep in mind that a multimeter has got its limitations. So it will only give you an average reading and not the actual height of the pulse. Now again, hooked up my negative lead to the negative post of the battery, hooked up the positive lead of the multimeter to the trigger wire, and make sure you set your multimeter to AC because this will be an AC pulse. Now let's Crank it over. And as you can see, we've got about 400 millivolts. Now, so far we have confirmed that the kill switch is not causing our no spark. We've also seen that we got a good trigger pulse. By the way, if you're using a multimeter, everything between 400 millivolts and one and a half volts AC is considered to be good. Now, if you paid attention, you saw that the voltage of the pulse on the oscilloscope was actually a lot higher than what the multimeter was displaying. And that's because the multimeter is only giving us an average voltage and not the height of the pulse. Now in the next step, let's check the power and the ground going to our CDI box. Checking the ground going to the CDI box is easy. Again, we're gonna use a test light. One side of the test light hooked up to battery positive, And when we touch a negative, the test light will light up. Now let's take a look at a diagram and we can see that the green wire in the corner right here is going to be our ground. Now, if your wire coloring on your scooter is different, just stick to the pin numbers. Now, let's check that ground. And as you can see, the test light lights up. So there's nothing wrong with the ground going to our CDI unit. Now, the next step, we're gonna check the power going to the CDI unit. Now, we need to keep in mind, there are two types of CDI units. We've got AC CDIs and DC CDIs. AC CDIs get their power directly from the stator, and this is going to be an AC current. DC CDIs are going to get their power from the battery, and that's going to be a DC current. Now, most of these scooters use an AC CDI, just like this one. So in the next step, let's check the voltage coming from that stator. Again, the negative lead of the oscilloscope hooked up to the negative battery terminal, and the positive lead of the oscilloscope is hooked up to the red and black wire in that two wire connector going to the CDI. Now we're going to take this measurement with the connector disconnected. Now let's crank it over and let's take a look at that voltage. And cranking it over. These AC CDIs need quite a high voltage to operate. But when we cranked the engine over, the line of the oscilloscope was barely moving. We were barely seeing any voltage at all. Now that red and black wire is coming directly from the stator, meaning the stator is not providing the CDI with power. Now the rotor and the stator are located behind this plastic cover. Now this plastic cover is being held down 
by a few tiny bolts. Now, let me quickly remove this plastic cover to take a look at what's going on behind it. I remove the plastic cover and behind it we can see the flywheel and above that we can see the pickup coil. Now on top of the flywheel we've got a cooling fan because the coils of the stator can become pretty hot. Now in the next step let's remove the cooling fan. After removing the cooling fans, we get access to a 14 millimeter nut holding the flywheel down. So let's remove that. But after removing that nut, the flywheel doesn't just come off, it's actually pressed on there. Now to remove the flywheel, we actually need to pull it off and you actually need a special puller and this is not it. Now, I usually don't work on scooters, I work on cars and I have this laying around and I think this is gonna work, but there are better pullers out there and they're actually quite inexpensive, but I need to get it off right now and this is what I have. So let's try to pull it off. Now after removing the flywheel, the rest is pretty simple. The stator is just being held down by two bolts. The pickup is also just being held down by two bolts. Now, then there is some wiring, but that's very easy. It's just a bunch of connectors. Now I've got this old known good unit laying around. I'm gonna install that one. I'm gonna put everything back together. And after that, let's see if the CDI gets the right voltage. Now reinstall the donor unit. Now always make sure that the pickup coil and the little notch don't touch after reinstalling. Now in theory, there's nothing you can do wrong because there's no adjustment, but just make sure there's a tiny bit of room in between that pickup coil and that notch. Now everything went really smooth. It's just a few bolts and a few connectors here at the top. Now in the next step, let's see what kind of voltage reading we're getting at that CDI unit with the donor unit installed. Now I didn't reinstall that plastic cover just yet. First, let's find out if we're getting the right voltage at our CDI. Again, positive scope lead hooked up to that uh, power supply wire, negative fault lead hooked up to the battery, negative terminal, hooked up my scope. So let's crank it over and let's see what kind of voltage we're getting. Now the moment of truth, let's crank it over and let's watch that voltage. Now that looked beautiful in the oscilloscope to me. Now let's repeat the same test using the multimeter. Again, the multimeter set to AC because like we saw on the oscilloscope, we've got an AC voltage coming directly from the stator and not coming through a voltage regulator. Now the negative lead connected to the negative battery terminal and the positive lead hooked up to the power feed of that CDI. Now let's crank it over. Now, as you can see, we got about 77 volts. Now, everything between 50 and 100 volts AC is considered to be perfect. Now, the moment of truth with another stator installed and the power supply restored to the CDI box, do we have spark again? Now, again, moment of truth, make sure the spark plug touches the block and has a good ground. Now, let's crank it over. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I see spark. Now we've got a spark, but does he also run? Now I still need to, I, I still need to do a lot. I need to put the plastic fins on, the plastic covers on. I still, I mean, I just, I just dropped the seat in and it still needs to be bolted down, but I want to see if we've got a fix. So let's start it and see if it runs. Oh yeah, and I guess we've got a fix. Now let's take another look at this stator. Attached to the stator 
is a wiring harness, and out of the wiring harness, in my case, come five wires. One, two, three, four, five. Now, one of those wires, being a blue and white wire, does run through this harness, but it's actually not attached to the stator. It just happens to be in the same harness. So I actually only got four wires. Now, one of those wires, being a blue and yellow one, comes from the pickup coil, and it provides the trigger pulse to the CDI, as we have seen in the video. Now the other three wires provide voltage to your scooter. Now the red and black wire provides voltage, AC voltage to your CDI directly. And that's usually being taken care of by the coils or coil that is wrapped up. In this case, we've got two, but in your case, it might be one. So on this stator, one of these coils has probably failed. Now there's two wires left and those go to your voltage regulator. Your voltage regulator converts that AC voltage into DC voltage so you can charge your battery and you can run your accessories. No spark because of a failed stator. Interesting, right? Now, I still need to do a lot of reassembling, but at least I was able to show you guys a fix. Now, I'm gonna call the supplier and I'm gonna tell them the problem was not the CDI. They can send me an invoice and I'm gonna keep the new unit as a spare. Now, do keep in mind that a bad stator, if it provides the wrong voltage, it can damage your CDI. So if you got a CDI that keeps failing, now you know what to check. Now, scooters is not what you normally see on my channel, but I still hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, and when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time, guys.